Hello everybody. Good morning. I hope everybody is uh, fine. Uh, I'm Khalid Al Amin and uh, I will be talking to you about epithelial uh, tissue. Uh, this is part of general uh, histology course. Uh, in this lecture, we are aiming at uh, defining what is epithelial tissue. The functions, we will try to see what are the functions of epithelial tissue, characteristics of epithelial tissue, and classification of epithelial tissue. Okay, so from this lecture, we will try to have an idea about these four major uh, learning objectives. Okay definition of epithelium functions characteristics and classification the classification of epithelial tissue will take us to uh, the two major uh, classes then we will uh, uh, go into details of other types of epithelial tissue okay before we go to epithelium let us go and define what our tissues and what is the importance of tissues and what are the basic tissues in our body I'm giving you time to think what are tissues I'm sure you have uh, idea about this in your biology uh, courses okay let us look at this picture this is the human body usually in the human body we is formed of four basic tissues the epithelial tissue the connective tissue muscle tissue and nervous tissue these tissues they are formed of cells and cellular uh, products cells themselves are formed of molecules and these are the smaller parts of the uh, body then we have cells then we have tissues uh, if you mix tissues together if you have epithelial with connective with muscle tissue then you will have uh, organs and with organs you will have cysts let us take uh, any organ this the liver the liver is formed of cells is formed of connective tissue uh, and so on uh, this is the lower limb it has bone which is connective tissue with the bone we have cartilage which is also connective tissue these bones are covered with muscles from outside we have the skin the outer layer of the, the skin is epidermis which is epithelium these muscles move because they are supplied by nerves okay? so in this smaller part of the body we have all types of uh, tissues if any of these tissues is abnormal if not formed well you will get problems Okay, so tissues are the basic components of our body. We have four tissues. In this course of general histology, we will try to trace these four tissues. So today we are starting with epithelial tissue with its two components. Next, we'll talk about connective tissue, then muscle tissue, and then nerve tissue. Maybe some of you will ask about the blood there is a lot of controversy about the blood and some people they put blood as a fifth tissue but others they say that blood is not a tissue it cannot be cut it cannot be uh, gone through the routine tissue preparation so they say blood is not a tissue at all a third group 
say that plot is part of the connective tissue and uh, with the other uh, hematopoietic tissues okay so the blood uh, in of this series is acceptable it can be a fifth tissue although I'm not going with this some consider it as uh, connective tissue and others they say that blood is not a tissue it is not a connective tissue at all okay so after this introduction let us go into our first tissue which is epithelial tissue each of the four basic tissues in the body we have talked about just in this introduction have its characteristic which help us help that tissue to serve its function okay what is epithelial tissue why is it important how how it look okay this as we have seen is what we are going to do so epithelial tissue is a tissue that consists mainly of cells closely packed cells and one of the most important characteristic of epithelial tissue is that it has very small amount of intercellular substance and this clearly because the cells are are clearly packed cells are crowded together okay this will help the epithelial tissue to cover internal or external surfaces okay i want you to imagine with me uh, the room you are sitting in the class you are sitting in everywhere and think of that room as uh, a body and this room will have a uh, painting from inside and it has maybe painting from outside what is the function of that painting is it the main part of the wall of that room the answer is no the painting is that it's something which help someone who is sitting inside to have a, a good look maybe uh, you have ceramic it will help you to move it will act as a barrier for water for other things okay and the same your room is covered from outside by a thin layer and this may be for protection of that tissue this is the same what epithelial tissue do in our body so where we find epithelial tissue in our body any whole organ any organ with lumen in our body from inside is lined with epithelial tissue and from outside our skin is covered by layer of epithelial tissue which will serve the function of protection barrier and so on you can see that this is why the epithelial tissue will be formed of a closely packed cell Okay, because if it will line the surfaces from inside it need to be very uh, tight and uh, a barrier uh, tissue look at this on the right this is the diagrammatic image on the left this is H and E image you can see here we have uh, cells they have different heights so we will talk about this later this is epithelial tissue uh, we have something here which is called basement membrane this is called the basement membrane so this is the base of the tissue and from here this is another tissue this is connective tissue uh, this is the apical part of the epithelium so from here to here this is our tissue this is epithelial tissue as you can see here okay this is another tissue So why do we need a tissue on the surfaces, inner or outer surfaces of our body and organs and so on? Why we need this? Number one, because, and this can be exemplified by the skin, as a barrier and protection from microorganisms, from sunlight, harmful sun, uh, UV light, 
dust, uh, anything. Selective permeability, if it is on the inner surfaces of the kidney, it will selectively allow passage of substances. Absorption, a good example here is the gastrointestinal tract, the intestine. We eat food, we digest food, then we need to move food from the lumen of the GIT to the blood vessels to the inside of our body and this is called absorption. Who is important in this absorption? It is the epithelial tissue because it is on the surface. Secretion and we will talk about uh, uh, a big part of epithelial tissue which we will call glandular tissue which uh, mainly serve as uh, secretion. Sensation and this is not a main function of epithelium but it may help in this function because sensation is the function of uh, the nervous tissue okay so now we finished about definition of epithelium and we know what it is its nature and the function okay let us go to another important part of this talk which is characteristics of epithelium how can i identify epithelium how can I differentiate epithelium from the other three tissues? We have uh, seven main characteristics. We will go through them one by one. Number one, and this was part of the definition, epithelium is highly cellular. Epithelium is made mainly of cells. And this will be in contrast with other uh, tissues for example in connective tissue we will see that it is formed of cells but they are not the main because we have other main components number two cells in the epithelial in epithelial tissue they are polarized what does it mean polarized polarized okay polarized mean that as we have seen in the epithelial uh, tissue I showed you, uh, the cells they have a base, they have apex, they have lateral surfaces. All the cells are directed towards one direction. So usually, if they are lining uh, the intestine, the apical surface of the cells will be in the direction of the lumen. If we are talking about the skin, the epidermis of the skin, uh, the base of the cells will be towards our body and the apical part will be towards the outside. Another important feature, sometimes epithelial cells have apical surface specializations which help epithelium in its function. Maybe the cells without apical surface specialization, but sometimes if they want to work efficiently, they can have this specialization. Like what? Microvilli. Microvilli. What are microvilli? Microvilli are folding of the apical surface. So instead of the apical surface being shorter, the apical surface will be thrown into folds. We call them microvilli. Sometimes we call them brush borders. Sometimes we call them brush borders. Number two, we can have stereocilia or cilia. They they are similar, but cilia they are moving apical surface specializations to move a substance and stereocilia is stereo means constant stereocilia is they are cilia which are uh, constant also structurally they are not the same uh, flagella we, we don't have this in human a lot but uh, we can have an example of the sperm the sperm have a tail, sperm is a cell with a tail and this tail will or flagella will 
help the sperm to move again so the flagella will help the whole cell to move the cilia will help this the cell to move something for example mucus in the respiratory system or the ova in the fallopian tube while the stereocilia which is found in the male genital tract it will help the sperm to move but we know that the sperm has a tail it has small size mitochondria it can move on its own it do not need cilia like in the ova but it can move on its own so what is the function of stereocilia here stereocilia will help the sperm to move okay so we have four apical uh, specialization you can see me these pictures look at this this is the apical surface of this cell imagine that this is a cell on the apical surface of the intestine so instead of being shorter you can see here we have increased the surface area by this brush border okay so we can see it in the intestine or in the kidney in the proximal convoluted tubules it will aid in absorption absorption will occur in shorter time because of this microvilli or brush border okay so this is brush border these are microvilli they increase the surface area and they help the cell in uh, moving particle uh, sorry in absorbing uh, for example glucose amino acids water anything uh, this is a picture which can tell us about the cilia here we have the respiratory tract starting from the nose, the pharynx, the larynx, trachea, bronchi and so on. All these uh, surfaces, the epithelial surface on these respiratory airways is uh, loaded with, uh, with cilia which will help the respiratory tract get rid of microorganisms trying to go into our respiratory tract. Uh, we will have mucus here the dust will be trapped with mucus and the dirty mucus will be moved to the outside okay so we have here uh, cilia helping in moving uh, the particle uh, towards the outside the same cilia we can see it in the fallopian tube and it will aid in the movement of the ova so in uh, fertilization then moving the zygote towards the uterus so it is very important yeah can you think what we have if we have no cilia in the respiratory tract what happens imagine that we have someone who is born without cilia what will happen think the mucus will be produced the bacteria will be attached to the mucus but this mucus will not be moved to the outside so the mucus will be will stay in the respiratory tract in the lungs and we will get repeated infection we will get repeated infection in this uh, fashion let us go back to the characteristic of epithelial tissue we say we said that they are uh, highly cellular they are polarized they have apical surface specialization number four any epithelial tissue should rest on a basement membrane and they have a lateral cell contact they have a specialized cell contact on the lateral surface we have seen the specializations on the apical surface also on the lateral surface epithelial tissue have specializations like what like tight junctions gap junctions and desmosomes what is the function of these three they keep the cells together they keep the cells uh, together and because we said epithelial tissue is formed of closely packed cell okay so what make these cells pack together this lateral surface specialization I, I will show you a very nice picture to remember this number six epithelial tissue is avascular what does it mean avascular 
a vascular mean that this tissue has no blood vessels in it does this mean that this tissue is dead because usually if we have the blood cut from one tissue the tissue will die is the epithelial tissue a dead tissue the answer is no it is a living tissue how is that a tissue without blood vessels and it is a living tissue yeah this is because epithelial tissue usually is a thin tissue and it can get its oxygen nutrition and it can get rid of its waste product through the process of diffusion from a neighbor tissue this will take us to another fact usually epithelial tissue will rest on a vascular tissue which is usually connective tissue let us say this again any epithelial tissue should rest on a connective tissue and oxygen nutrition will pass to the epithelial tissue by the process of diffusion okay so this is a very important uh, characteristic of epithelial tissue the last characteristic is the one which is very important epithelial tissue can undergo self renewal or self regeneration again if you have a wound a cut wound a clean cut wound in your hand you will notice that six seven days later the wound is closed and the epithelial tissue in your hand is regenerated and renewed okay this is different from sometimes if you use the word healing if you have a large wound infected wound usually the, the body will not be able to renew all the tissues so it will heal the wound but not with the same tissues with different tissues usually connective tissue but in epithelial tissue epithelial tissue have the ability to bridge the gaps if any epithelial tissue has a small gap the cells is not so far they can regenerate from the side and they can heal the wound with cells with the same structure and with the same function the epithelium in our intestine is uh, renewed on daily basis your skin is renewed on daily basis you lose cells from the surface you renew them otherwise your skin will be just vanished in few days and weeks so our uh, epithelial is kept there kept functioning by self renewal okay so these are the characteristic of epithelial tissue i want to show you this picture these are neighboring cells you can see that they have tight junctions which are usually on the apical side we can have gap junctions and what is the difference between tight and gap tight are on the apical surface they have no space in the middle gap junctions they have space in the middle they are keeping these cells together but at the same time these gap junctions may allow passage of small molecules for example sodium potassium between these cells again okay? so gap junctions can allow passage they are lateral surface specializations we have uh, desmosomes they have hairy processes and definitely we have a uh, tight junction what is the function of these lateral surface specializations these are people protesting you can see a lot of people back there but we have people on the front look at these people what are they doing these people they are closely packed they want to keep going closely packed without separation so what are they doing they are holding the hands of each other and they are making tight junctions here gap junctions tight junctions and so these people will be if you look at this person maybe he's an organizer of this he's not holding any hand uh, when the police come when there is the tear gas thrown uh, these people will separate easily but 
those ones will not separate easily okay why because they have lateral surface specialization okay so lateral surface specialization they keep the cells together and they will prevent passage of intercellular substances between these cells they prevent separation of these cells and the surface of the intestine or the skin will be uh, very tight and uh, as we said the epithelium the first function we have said is barrier and protection <coughs> okay let us go now to the classification of epithelial tissue and this will take a great part of the talk usually we classify epithelial tissue on two bases number one on the base of the cell shape and number two on the arrangement what does it mean the shape and the arrangement how can we use these two features to classify epithelial tissue according to shape we usually have three order shape cells can be squamous which means flat or cuboidal this is from the word cube we know that the cube have the same width height and uh, length and columnar shape which is from the word column which means tall so here the cells have very long height and they have very short widths again so cells according to shape they can be divided epithelial cells i mean can be divided into three squamous cuboidal or columnar according to arrangement which is number of layers epithelium can be divided into symbol or stratify what does it mean symbol symbol mean that the epithelial the epithelium is formed of one layer of cells one layer of closely packed cell while stratified will mean cells are arranged in more than one layer it may be two maybe ten maybe hundred okay anything which is more than one is stratified and definitely the epithelial lining here is thick we have other type which is something between symbol and stratified and we call it pseudo stratified columnar epithelium this epithelium is very sought as stratified but with more development of the tissue processing staining microscopes people came to know that this tissue is not stratified and it is only formed of uh, one layer but the cells have different heights some of the cells are tall some of them are short and this will make the nuclei being at different levels usually we compare this epithelium to simple columnar epithelium in simple columnar epithelium we have one layer of tall cells the same height the nuclei at the same level but in pseudo stratified cells are at different heights and so the nuclei at different height so not all of the cells are reaching the apex but all the cells being short or tall they will reach the basement membrane okay okay so now we divided the epithelium according to shape into three types and according to arrangement into symbol and stratified okay forget about the suit we'll come to to it later if we take this symbol if the epithelium is formed of one layer of cells and the cells are flat this is symbol squamous if the cells are cuboidal this is symbol cuboidal and if the cells are tall this is symbol cuboidal if you came to stratify the same thing if you have more than one layer but the surface cells are squamous these are stratified squamous this is one of the most important epithelia in our, in our body we have less important stratified epithelia which are stratified cuboidal or stratified columnar okay so i can see that just mixing the two classification here we can get six types three symbol 
and series stratified and definitely we have the pseudo stratified which can be the fifth the seventh uh, type okay so before we go into details of this we classify epithelium generally in by two big classification features either the shape or the number of layers according to shape we have three types and according to arrangement we have two and if you mix them together we have six type if you add to the stratified we have seven type okay let us take them one by one and we can start with the same okay let me here uh, uh, stress on one point usually when we name any epithelium please use the two features talk about the number of layer and the shape if you are asked about a certain type of epithelium don't say this is cuboidal don't say this is columnar okay define what type of cuboidal or what type of columnar okay okay so how simple squamous looks like this is the most flat type of epithelium because it is formed of one layer and one layer of flat cells okay so this is the most uh, flat type of epithelium and this will make this type of epithelium sometimes suitable to go to be put on surfaces where we need passive movement you get my point why passive movement because here the passage in this epithelium is very easy you will be crossing just uh, one layer of cells, flat cells. Let me give you an example. In the alveoli of the lung, the sacs where we have gas exchange, the alveoli are lined with simple squamous epithelium, and this will make passage of oxygen from our lungs to the blood very easy process. Definitely, if you need to do active transport like absorption or uh, secretion, you will need to do to put the other types, symbol columnar and symbol cuboidal. So this is quite common in the body. And another example, which is very common in the body, is the heart from inside, the blood vessels, arteries, veins lymphatic vessels, capillaries, all these uh, vascular system lumens are lined from inside by simple squamous epithelium. We talked about the flat epithelium, so oxygen from the blood to tissues will pass very easily. The waste from the tissues to the blood will pass very easily. Another thing which is done by this type of epithelium in the blood vessels they make the surface of the blood vessel from inside the smooth. What is the importance of this? It will make the passage of the blood easy. It will make the passage of the blood an easy process. Look at this. This is a serous membrane, pleura, proteinium or so. But if you look at the top here, this is single layer of flat cells you see that the cells are a bit uh, domed on the middle this because of the nucleus because the cells are usually passive they don't have a lot of organelles so their shape is squares these avascular cells they have a basement membrane they will take their oxygen and nutrition from this tissue which is connective tissue okay so this epithelium is Symbol columnar epithelium. Another important type is symbol cuboidal epithelium. Here the cells have the same height, the same width, so they look like a cube. Symbol cuboidal, it means that the cell have a bigger surface and it contains a lot of organelles. It is suitable for active functions. This epithelium is typically suitable for secretory function. It can occur in the ducts of 
many glands, the spiroid, the tubules of the kidney. If you look at this, these cells, you see they have rounded nucleus. The shape is cuboidal. One layer. This is the basement membrane. So this is simple cuboidal uh, epithelium. Another picture. This is cuboidal cells. Look at the nucleus. Where is the nucleus? It is at the middle of the cell. How it looks like? It is rounded. This is from the kidney urinary uh, tubules, and you can see that we have cuboidal cells. One layer. This layer is resting on connective tissue. You see, this connective tissue here is shared between this epithelium and this epithelium. So this is one layer of cuboidal cells. They are not tall. They are not flat. So this is simple cuboidal epithelium. Here is the lumen of the kidney this is the lumen where we have urine passing if we want to absorb something it will pass from here through these cells to the connective tissue here if we want to secrete something from the blood and, and we want it to pass in urine it will pass from here in this direction so what is the function suitable to symbol cuboidal epithelium let us stop at this question is it protection is it a barrier is it exchange of oxygen is it secretion and as we said the answer is d which is secretion okay the third type of the symbol epithelium is symbol columnar and definitely here the cells are tall the nuclei lie uh, within the same uh, level usually near the base be careful about this this what makes you differentiate between simple columnar and pseudo stratified columnar in the simple columnar the cells have the same height nuclei at the same level and they are usually basal nuclei the good example for this is the gastrointestinal tract not the whole gastrointestinal tract but from the stomach to the rectum look at this epithelium this is this very nice epithelium this is the villus in the intestine the nuclei at the same level the cells have the same height and this is low power but if it is high power you can see the brush border or the microvilli on the surface here the nuclei at the same level the white cells here they are goblet cells we'll talk about them later they are part of a, a gland if you look at this this layer is called lamina propria or connective tissue which supply this epithelium with blood and if we have glucose here and we want to absorb this glucose actively it will pass through these columnar cells to this connective tissue where we have blood vessels if this function of absorption is passive and not active like what is actually happening we will not see the symbol columnar but we will see symbol squamous because the space will be shorter for the materials to pass okay if you look here you can see a lot of cells dividing and renewing the lost epithelial cells okay so this is symbol columnar suitable for absorption found in the gas intestinal tract tall cells the same height and the same here tall cells nuclei at the same level usually more closer to the base this is the basement membrane this is the connective tissue in the middle this is another uh, columnar symbol columnar epithelia this is time for questions please if you have any questions you can just uh, put them in the comments i will see them and i can reply to them there so in summary, in this first part of the epithelial tissue, we talked about definition of epithelium, 
functions characteristics of epithelium we mentioned seven characteristics being closely packed apical surface basal surface lateral surface tight junction gap junction desmosomes um, cilia microvilli flagella maybe on the apical surface and uh, we talked about the cells being avascular and able to be new we talked about the classification how we classify the epithelial tissue we classify it on basis of two either the number of layer or the shape and according to this we get so many types we talked here in this first part about uh, three uh, types symbol squamous suitable for passive functions being making surfaces smooth example in blood vessels symbol cuboidal same height same width suitable for secretion symbol columnar tall cells one layer suitable for absorption a good example is a gastrointestinal tract okay so this is the end of this first and in the next uh, session about the epithelium we will talk about the stratified uh, epithelium the other types of stratified epithelium actually we have eight types we talked about three we have five types remaining these be careful here these eight types they form what we call surface epithelium surface epithelium another type another big type of epithelium is glandular epithelium okay so in the next we'll talk about the stratified epithelium and we will need to talk about glandular epithelium to finish the epithelial tissue i will uh, like to uh, draw your attention to the sources from which you can uh, increase your uh, readings i want you to go to uh, this site it is the uh, site of uh, Michigan University you can find there slides about epithelial tissue uh, earlier when I talked to you about blue histology uh, which is a site from the University of Western Australia also you can find there uh, histology you can go to this site simply by uh, writing Michigan histology on Google for example or writing blue histology on Google you will go to this in addition to that, uh, you can have a look at Jankwer basic uh, histology. Also, you can find uh, a good sources. Okay, so we we'll stop here and see you in the stratified epithelium. Thank you. Hello, <coughs> hello everybody. I hope you are fine. Uh, you are away from Corona, Corona is away from you. Uh, we are continuing on epithelial tissue. On the last session, we talked about uh, epithelium in general. We talked about the three types of symbol epithelium symbol squamous, symbol cuboidal, and symbol uh, columnar. In this session, we will continue and we will try to see the other types of epithelia which are stratified so what we are trying to do in this we will try to see the different types of stratified epithelia but more specifically we will concentrate on the stratified squamous epithelium definitely because it is uh, more important then we'll talk about uh, two other types of epithelium transitional and through the stratified columnar because they are uh, they have specific features okay so this is what we are trying to explain in this lecture um, as we said last time when we classified epithelium when we say stratified what comes to our mind is that it is formed of more than one layer maybe 2, maybe 50, 17, 100, and so on. Like the symbol, it has many types, namely three 
types symbol stratified schemas stratified cuboidal and stratified columns these are three but as i said we will talk about two more types the transitional and the pseudo stratified columns So uh, these are the simple types, simple squamous, flat, cuboidal, simple cuboidal, and simple columnar. Look at the nuclei here, they are not so uh, precise, they are not basal, they are supposed to be just near the base. Uh, what we are trying to do, we'll talk about the stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, stratified uh, columnar, not shown here. And then about these two terrestrial types, the transitional and the pseudo stratified columnar. Okay, let us go into business and we start with this, which is a very important type of epithelia, stratified squamous epithelia, definitely because it line it covers the surface of our body. Uh, the thickness of this epithelium will vary definitely depending on the number of layers. If you have 10, it's not like if you have 60. Uh, so if it is formed of layers, the layers which are deep, the layers which are so close to the basement membrane, they are usually not the squamous. Okay, so I draw your attention to this point. The basal cells, we call them basal cells, those cells on the base, they are not uh, squamous, they are columnar or sometimes cuboidal, and these cells, they are very important. These cells, they are very important. Why are they very important? Because they are the cells which are important in regeneration of the whole epithelium. Okay, so this stratified squamous, its survival will depend on these deep layers. Okay, the basal uh, cells. Okay, so they are uh, usually active. They have uh, mitotic uh, division going on all the time, and they are uh, important in regeneration of the epithelium. Okay, so if you look at, at this, this uh, basement membrane here, and you see these cells are called basal cells, and you can see that they are not squamous. Uh, the squamous cells are those on the surface. So the whole epithelium here is called stratified squamous, although the, the squamous cells are the ones on the surface. So usually stratified epithelium is named according to surface cells. Again, stratified epithelium is named according to the shape of the surface cells, not the middle cells, not the basal cells, because these may have different shapes. So these are the basal cells. Usually you see that their nuclei will be active. Uh, the cells which are next to them here, they are of different shapes, and usually we call them polyhedral cells. Polyhedral because of their different shapes while whenever you go towards the surface the cells get more flatter okay and until we reach the squamous cells on the surface so the next layer is the middle layer is a layer of polyhedral cells while closer to the surface the cells will become flattened and uh, we name the stratified squamous epithelium according to the surface cells okay what is the function of these strat uh, surface cells? They will be the cells in contact with the outside, the atmospheric environment of the body. So they are protective cells. What is the function of the basal cells? They are regenerating cells. What about these polyhedral cells? They are transitional between, they are moving from the deep layer so as to reach the surface cells. If these surface cells are replaced, are lost, they will be replaced by these polyhedral cells. So whenever I go towards the surface, the cells will become more squamous. So 
the whole stratified squamous epithelium usually is important for protection of tissues. Usually we find stratified squamous epithelium whenever we need protection. For example, our skin, the mouth, the mouth is used for speech. Now I'm talking for a long time. Uh, we use our mouth to eat. We can eat hot food, cold food, food of different shapes, and this will this need an epithelium which is strong. Which epithelium is strong and can withstand all these? It is the stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, so this is uh, H&E staining of stratified squamous epithelium. You can see here the connective tissue, the basal layer, the basement membrane, the basal cells here. You look at the nuclei, they are more darker, they are more active. And here we have polyhedral cells. Closer to the surface, we get more squamous cells. I want you to look with me. Uh, all the layers of cells here, they contain nuclei. I will talk about this in a minute. But all the cells here, they contain nuclei. Although they change in shape, here they are squamous, different shapes, and here they are columnar cells. Okay, so this is stratified squamous epithelium. You can see that it is a sick epithelium. It is not the same like the symbol squamous, which is for passage or making smoother surfaces, but here it is for protection. So, let us go back to this epithelium. What if we want this epithelium to be more harder? This is protective epithelium. Typically, this epithelium in front of you can be seen in the esophagus, where we swallow food, food which is not yet processed. It is just food in the mouth, passed to the esophagus. So, it's still it is maybe it is still hard, hard, still hot, and it needs this epithelium to protect other layers of the esophagus. But if we what if we want this epithelium to be more harder, for example, in our, in our skin? What we can do? These cells here, they will produce a tough protein called keratin. And this keratin will deposit in these cells, namely the cells which are closer to the surface. Keratin will fill the cells. And what it will do? It will make the cells more protective, more harder. Okay, so according to this, if you have this type of epithelium without keratin, this is called non keratinized. If you put keratin inside these cells, definitely you will call the cells keratinocytes, and the cells and the whole epithelium will be called keratinized epithelium. Keratinized is stratified squamous epithelium. Why we did this keratinization to make the epithelium more protective, more harder, more tougher epithelium. And so according to this, we can divide epithelium into keratinized epithelium. Good example for this is the skin or non-keratinized epithelium. A good example for this is the esophagus or the vagina. Okay. So guess this is clear because this is very important look at this diagrammatic picture maybe from the esophagus look at the layers of the stratified squamous epithelium here we have the darker nuclei dividing nuclei basal cells polyhedral cells more squamous cells flat cells but we see the nuclei all over so these cells they are not keratinized because if you have creatine creatine will push the nuclei peripherally, they will compress the nuclei, maybe in the more surface cells, the nuclei will be uh, removed and it will be replaced all over by creatine. So this is not keratinized. Why? Because you can see the nuclei all over. But what about this one? Can you see the nuclei here? No. What we, what we are seeing here, it is a layer of Keratinized cells, many layers of keratinized cells. So, this type of epithelium in front of you is 
stratify the squares, creatinine epithelium. Definitely, this is taken from the, the skin. And as we will see later, this is called sick skin, maybe from the palm of the hand. We see a lot of layers of keratin. Can you see the nuclei? No. All these cells here are uh, keratinized. Definitely the basal cells, the dividing cells here, they will not be keratinized because we need them to divide. So they will not be keratinized. And whenever you move towards the surface, you will start to produce keratin. Keratin will increase until you reach this. Sorry. So this is very important. Look at here. This is connective tissue, which will provide oxygen and nutrition for this uh, tissue. Let me say again: we talked about the stratified squamous epithelium. We talked about the two types of stratified squamous epithelium: the keratinized and the non-keratinized. And we know why we may need creatine or not okay so it is just a matter of uh, making the epithelium more protective more strong <coughs> maybe some of you will ask about this here more dark layer uh, this is a layer of deposited pigment in our skin this is melanin this is melanin which is produced by cells near the basal cells here called melanocytes and this melanin deposited here will act as an umbrella which is protecting these dividing cells these dividing cells if they get UV light their DNA may be damaged and we may get cancer cells or abnormal cells ok so we have a, a layer here of melanin deposited here which is different from keratin. Keratin is to make these cells tough, mechanically more strong. Melanin is to absorb the UV light and to protect these dividing cells and other cells of our body. Okay, what are the other types of stratified exilium? We have stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar. We'll just talk about them very quickly. They are not common in the body, so they are not so important like the uh, stratified squamous the surface cells are either columnar or cuboidal and this will, will give them the name of either stratified cuboidal or columnar and a good example where you can see these are the ducts of glands big ducts not the small ducts I will show you a couple of pictures look at these, these two ducts you can see uh, two rows of nuclei like what is shown here in this diagram so this is uh, stratified cuboidal cells two layers of cuboidal cells the surface cells usually look at the surface cells look at here this is the big duct and it is lined by stratified columnar look at the nuclei at the same layer they are away from the apex so this is tall cells so these are columnar cells this is the duct we have secretion here maybe this is saliva or pancreatic secretion or so because this is a big duct so it is lined by this type of uh, epithelium being here columnar or cuboidal uh, these ducts may modify the secretion here so they may be active they are not squamous they can do something for the secretion this is another uh, picture for a duct and we can see clearly here the uh, lining epithelium which is stratified columnar this is uh, glandular tissue we'll talk about later this will produce the secretion and this duct will take the secretion to the site of action okay up to now we talked about three symbol three stratified now time to talk about transitional and pseudo stratified columnar transitional epithelium the word the key word here is transition transition means change the key feature of this epithelium is change how this epithelium is called transitional or it is a type of a stratified squamous epithelium but it is called 
transitional because it can change. This type of epithelium is found mainly and exclusively in the excretory passages of the urinary system, like the ureters, the urinary bladder, some of the part of the urethra. It is called transitional because it can change in the number of layer or the shape of the surface cells, depending on what on the distinction of the organ. Okay, let us take one of these good example of this urinary excretory pathways. Let us take the urinary bladder. If we have a urinary bladder which is full of urine, distended with urine, what will happen to the number of layers? It will be reduced because the layers will be compressed by urine and uh, we will have less layers and the surface cells will definitely not be cuboidal or clogged they will be flattened and they will be compressed what happens if after that the person goes to bathroom and emptied his bladder the distension will be over what happens to the layers they will increase okay so usually if the urinary bladder is full you will get less layers two to three and you will get flat surface cells if the bladder is empty, you will get more layers, which is the true number of layers, which is up to seven, and the surface cells will be clop or cuboidal in shape. Okay, so the same layers they will not be uh, removed; they will be just compressed. And after removal of or removal of the tension, these layers will get back to their original shape and number of layers. Look at this, this diagrammatic picture of epithelium of the urinary bladder. Can you tell me about the distension of the organ? How many layers we can see? Two, three, four, five. Okay, this is an organ which is not in stress, it is not full, so the epithelium is relaxed. And you can see it is showing more layers and the surface cells are more clogged. Okay, so look at these two states. What about this one? This is an epithelium which is relaxed, and this is the same epithelium when we get more urine <coughs> and it is stretched and in tension. And we can see that, for example, the urinary bladder here is full, and you can see that it appears as it is two to three layers and the cells are flat. Okay, so these are the situations which make us call this type of epithelium. Transitional. Transitional means can. Okay. These are the same different situations for the urinary bladder. Here it is distended. Fewer number of layers here. They are more layers, club shaped layers. This is an empty, relaxed urinary bladder as shown here in this diagram below. Can you answer this question? This is an epithelium from the urinary bladder. Is it full or empty bladder? Look at it. Count the numbers. Usually, any row of nuclei will be considered as one layer, like this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay, so there are five, six layers. Definitely, this is a relaxed, empty urinary bladder. Uh, the last type, the eighth type of epithelium we will talk about is pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Earlier on, if you remember, we said that it is called pseudostratified because it looks like stratified, but actually it is symbol columnar, but it is not the same like symbol columnar. It has differences from symbol columnar. So it looks like symbol columnar. It looks like stratified. It is something in between. So. It is called pseudostratified columnar epithelium. What happens in this epithelium? We have uh, cells which re all cells reaching the basement membrane. They are of different heights. Some of them they do not reach the surface. They are shorter or basal cells, and others are tall cells. The nuclei 
because the cells are of different height, the nuclei are at different levels. A good example for this type of mycelium is the respiratory system. Sometimes we can see it in some tax, the same like stratified cuboidal or columnar. But always remember we can see it in uh, the respiratory system, in the nose, the larynx, the trachea, bronchi, and so on. Okay, look at this. This is the basement membrane. Look at this short cell, short one, another one here. But in between, we have tall cells. If you look at the nuclei, the row of nuclei, they may be appear more than one layer. So this is what makes people at first think this is stratified. But actually, there is just one layer of cells of different heights, nuclei at different levels, as shown in front of you. Okay, this is the same epithelium on the left, represented here by this uh, diagram. Uh, definitely, you are seeing these cells, which are short basal. What is the function of this basal cell? Do you think the function of these basal cells? Remember what is the function of basal cells in stratified squamous epithelium? Yes, it is regeneration. Okay, I guess some of you get this uh, answer. T cells will be important in renewal of the whole epithelium, while the tall cells carrying the cilia, for example, in the respiratory system, will be uh, lining the epithelium, protecting the larynx, trachea, and so on. Let us see this <coughs> video. Okay, I think this is very clear. It made a difference between these two types of epithelia. Okay, again, if you have any question, please you can put it in the comments because it will tell me about your understanding of the concepts in this uh, session. So, in a summary, we have uh, Eight types of epithelia, three simple, uh, three stratified, straightforward stratified, and two uh, special types, two the stratified columnar, and this transitional, which is a type of this stratified found in the urinary system, uh, urinary bladder, ureter, scalises, pelvis, and so on. We talked about the functions, suitability of these types. This is stratified is for protection. Hard, tough, it can be made more harder by addition of keratin and it will be keratinized stratified squamous. The basal cells are very important. They are important for regeneration of the whole epithelium. Okay, this is about epithelium. You can see in front of you eight types of epithelium. Okay. Let me draw your attention to a very important point. All these eight types are called surface epithelium. They are either on the inner surface of a hollow organ or from outside, but they are on the surface. So they are called surface epithelium. We have another type of epithelium which is not on the surface, which is functioning only in secretion, 
but not on the surface, not necessarily on the surface, and this is called glandular epithelium. And this will be the uh, topic of the next session. Okay, so in these two sessions, uh, part one, part two, we talked about simple and stratified epithelium of the surface epithelium, and next we'll talk about glandular epithelium. Okay, uh, I want you also to uh, be able to use some of the resources I want you to use to uh, strengthen your uh, reading about uh, uh, histology this is site is called blue histology simply you can go to Google and write blue histology and you find it here blue histology you just go to this and you find this uh, menu here nodes, messages, MCQ, quizzes the first one here is very important and these quizzes also they are very important I want you to click on nodes and when you go there the first one here is Ibicelia and glands go there you will find the talk about Ibicelia stratified uh, and the glandular epithelium which will be the our next talk so you will find the talk about epithelia here let me help you uh, this site uh, blue histology is a site of the school of anatomy uh, human biology the university of western australia it is open for you you can use it the, they are talking here about symbol you can see some pictures uh, some pictures here and even there is an explanation of these pictures the tidinum, symbol columnar epithelium, stratified epithelium uh, what we have talked about this is from the esophagus and so on okay so I need you to go there there is a talk about pseudo stratified and transitioning sometimes with uh, animations and so on okay so this is uh, one of the very important resources I want you to, to use Another, uh, if you also if you come here and you write Michigan, Michigan histology, also histology at the University of Michigan, uh, this is very beneficial also resource for you, you can go to this, all histology topics it contain an open uh, window for you here you find uh, a lot of tissues you can find epithelial tissue uh, this site is different from blue histology because in the michigan histology here you can be as if you are doing uh, uh, a lab a practical this is virtual microscopy so if you go here this is symbol columnar epithelium if you go there it needs to enable adobe flash player i will click it i will click allow see what happens next it will open a slide this is the slide this is the an organ this is the lumen of it this is where you can see this tissue is the epithelium so I will use this, I will scroll and change the magnification you see now you are using your microscope this will allow you to change ok now we are concentrating on the epithelium this is connective tissue let us increase the magnification how it looks what type of epithelium we are clicking on symbol columnar let us make a more magnification okay. this is columnar symbol columnar okay so this is a very beneficial site for you to navigate and to see your slides your histology slides and so on okay you can use your uh, laptop your tab and you can see this epithelium 
this is connective tissue this is simple columnar epithelium you can search different areas okay this is very nice you see a simple columnar epithelium sometimes you can see dividing cells here this is simple columnar epithelium very nice okay so uh, these two i i want you to use the michigan and the blue histology uh, definitely in addition to your uh, uh, young queer uh, basic history thank you thank you very much i hope you